Thank you for joining with us today. Today we're continuing in our study about discipleship and how to become a better disciple. Today we're going to be talking about compassion. And I think it's something that we need to think about more in our walk with the Lord because I think he wants us to think about it. The word said many times he had compassion on the crowd. And as we walk with the Lord, we need to have compassion on those who need Jesus. But before we talk about that a little bit more, enter into worship with the worship team and just praise the Lord.
I believe you gave sight to the blind. I believe that the dead came to life. I believe there are wonders and signs. You're still the same. I believe every word that you said. I believe there are scars in your hands. That your goodness is good without end. You'll never change. Oh, I will tell of your wonders, sing of your grace. The God of creation knows me by name. The Lord is faithful yesterday. generations will bow down in praise. The Lord is faithful yesterday, now and always, always. I believe you will come in the clouds. I believe you are here even now. In your presence I know there is power, power. Thank you, worship team. You know, as we talk about compassion, it means to be concerned about the suffering of others. It means to suffer with. And as we talk about growing in discipleship, we need to have compassion. We're going to be talking about that and learning how to develop a compassionate spirit like Christ had. You know, compassion is a word from the Greek word, Splazonoma, I think that's how you say it. It was originally referred to the inner parts of a man, his heart, his liver, and later become a word used to describe the lower parts, his abdomen, his intestines, and especially his womb. And this impresses re readers that the power and the force of God's compassion, they also may have this physical feeling with compassion. Sometimes it's a sharp pain in our abdomen because we feel this intense feeling or compassion or pity for others that we love. You know, compassion is to be concerned or 
for the suffering of others. It means to suffer with someone, to kind of like feel their heartbreak, and it becomes their suffering. You know, if we look at Matthew 9.36, it says, when he saw the cr- crowds, he w- had compassion for them. And the compassion of Jesus is to be our God as for discipleship. We need to have that same kind of compassion. Because first we're going to look at Jesus had compassion for the lost. Let's look at Matthew 9, 35 through 38. And Jesus went through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly for the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into the harvest. See, the mission of Jesus is also the mission of the church, to reach the lost. Everything we do ought to be directed towards touching and reaching the lost. Jesus taught us to pray for the laborers to go into the field to bring in the harvest. But let's look at for a moment. What are some of the reasons this can be difficult for us? We cannot come across as being judgmental rather than pointing others to the Savior. And that can make it tough. We also can struggle with our own spirituality and wonder how we can talk to somebody else because we know what's going on in our life. That we're not, we are not perfect and we haven't arrived. We sometimes fail to see the open door because we're not looking for it. Or we don't, we're timid about sharing the things that God's doing. But Romans 10, 13 through 15 asks some important questions for us to think about. It says, how then will they call on him whom they've not believed in? Or how are they to believe in whom they've never heard about? And how are they to hear without somebody preaching? And how are they to preach unless someone is sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Some might start feeling relief. Oh, I'm not a preacher. But we're all bearers of good news. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are a bearer of good news. You need to be sharing that with others. We're all laborers of the harvest. How can the world believe if nobody's going to share with them about Jesus? And sometimes it's just sharing what God's doing in your life and how he's touching you and how he's changing you. That's what we need to do. Jesus had compassion for the sinners. In Hebrews 4.15, it says this, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who, in every respect, has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus was able to sympathize with the struggles that we have with sin, and he said he would get us through it. Compassion should drive us to care for the lost or reach out to the lost. The second thing is compassion means to see, to feel, and to act. John Ruskins, a famous poet and critic, said this, once said this, that a good artist must possess three qualities, an eye to see and appreciate the beauty of the scene he desires to catch on canvas, a heart to feel and register the beauty and the atmosphere of the scene, and three, a hand to perform, to transfer to the canvas what the eye has seen and the heart felt. These are the essentials of compassion. An eye to see the need of men and women around us, to see that people need Jesus, to see that they're going the wrong way. Their spiritual need are the most important thing. But sometimes they're not always to see. It's, sometimes it's hard to see, especially if they're, they're good people and they think I'm good. But see, 
their physical needs are as important as well. Sometimes we we just can preach, but we don't see they're hungry or we don't see their need for other things. Their physical need is important as well. In Matthew fifteen thirty two, then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And am I unwilling to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way? Jesus had compassion on the crowd and did something about it. The same for us. When we see things that we need to do, we should reach out and do if we can. With all the sophisticated communication that we have today and technology we have, there are still people hungry in our city. There are still people experiencing things in this country, in this world that we're in. Jesus cares about every one of them. And we should too. We need a heart to feel for the needs of men and women around us. We can see and sometimes experience pity, but it doesn't always move us to action. Because we see stuff every day. It doesn't always move us to action. Compassion by definition means to suffer together. But see, compassion can be difficult when we would rather pursue the things that make us happy. Tough, ain't it? When we become calloused because we see so much and we feel powerless to do anything about it. But I can do something for one. I may not be able to do something for a hundred, but I can do something for one. And that's where it needs to start with you and I. We can do something for one. Sometimes we get overloaded with compassion because it becomes bigger than our world. And we can't handle it. The need is so great, I can't do nothing. My little bit ain't going to do anything. Well, that's where I say we start with one. Reach out to somebody around you. Luke 19.41 says, When he drew near to the city, he wept over it. Now, Sanders says, what a concept, a weeping God. Tears streaming down his face and having compassion for the men and women who would crucify him later. Imagine the disbelief of angels. They weren't synthetic tears that Jesus was crying, but tears of genuine concern for the men and women who were going to crucify him later. Think about that. Jesus had compassion for people who were going to do him harm shortly. Hmm. Acts 20, 31. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years... I did not cease day or night to admonish every one of you with tears. See, we need an eye to see and a heart to feel. And we need hands to perform. You know, Christ did something about what he saw. Seeing and fear, feeling are sterile unless we are moved to action. Matthew fourteen fourteen. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. Luke seven twelve through 14. A funeral procession was coming out, and he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was the widow's only son. A large crowd from the village was with her. When he saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearer stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. The highest expression of compassion is the compassion that generates us to action, just like Jesus did. Colossians 3.12, it says, Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Hmm. We need to be moved the way Jesus was moved. The third thing is practical compassion. Compassion for someone that's hurting 
offer our full attention to someone. See, attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity, said French philosopher Simon Wheel. We need to have compassion. But there's also a compassion preparedness. Be alert for an opportunity for compassion. If you're not looking, you won't see. But I also know this. you got to put some cash away for just for that, that reason. I mean, you may stick $20 in your wallet to give out to somebody. You may, you may put a $50 bill in there. Lord, if you show me the person to give this to, I want to give it. Because when we, are, we do things like that, when God moves us to give, we have it to give. But if we don't set aside something to give, you won't be prepared, and many times you'll walk away. But if you have something ready, when God opens the door, you're ready to do what God has for you, to have compassion on someone. Sometimes we need to have compassion in the mail. Uh, send a letter of encouragement. You know, those little stamps that you put on something and send a card, a note that, that encourages somebody. That can be a word of compassion for someone. Send a note. Now, I know you could send a text or an email and that'd be easy, but there's something about a handwritten note that meant I invested my time in doing this for you. It produces great dividends. Compassion for strangers. Smile and compliment others. Greet a stranger with a smile and a, and a kind word. You can brighten the day of others by just looking them in the eyes and smiling. I love to catch people's eyes. I look and I smile at people all the time. Be gracious to cashiers and waiters and waitresses. Remember, they deal with some rude people sometimes. I hope it's not you. They're often unappreciated, not to mention they have rude people that speak to them roughly. Set it as an intention to treat everyone with kindness every day. Treat somebody with kindness every day. Wake up with that intention. Never underestimate a kind word. Compassion for a great cause. Volunteer. There are plenty of opportunities to volunteer all around us. You can do stuff all the time if you reach out to someone. Look for the privilege to reach out to elderly, neighbors, underprivileged kids. You need to take time to do that. Compassion through giving. Donate to a, a charitable store, the rescue mission of the Salvation Army, Donate by giving what you don't need anymore rather than, hey, I'll be, let me save it up and I'll sell it at a yard sale in a year or so. No, give it away. Make a difference in somebody else's life. The positive effect of compassion. Let's look at that a moment. You know, there are some side effects of compassion that may include uplifted spirits, a feeling of connection to those around you, greater mindfulness of those, reduced depression. And according to Dr. James Dottie, professor of neurology at Stanford University, practicing compassion has a positive psychological effect on our bodies. It can lower your blood pressure. It can boost your immunity system. It can lessen your anxiety. Hmm. Sounds like a winning thing to me. Brain imaging has showed that compassion stimulates the same pleasure centers associated with our drive for food and our other necessities of life. Hmm. In a study by Elizabeth Dunn at the University of British Columbia, participants were given a certain amount of money Half the participants were told to spend it on themselves. The other half were told, it to, told to spend it on others. At the end of the study, participants who had spent the money on others felt significantly happier than those who had spent the money on themselves. Other studies show that practicing compassion 
can often help us to fight and increase our fight off disease and increase our lifespan. Compassion is an act of the heart. Compassion grows when we regard the lost. Compassion follows the process of seeing, feeling, and acting. And that's our part of, of becoming a disciple. It makes a difference in our life. It makes us more like him. You know, one of the greatest stories of compassion is found in Luke 15. A wasteful son takes his inheritance into the world and wastes it all. When he realizes what he's done, he comes to his senses and he says, I would rather go home and be a slave to my father than to live like this. But his father has a different plan. Let's look at Luke 15, 20 through 24. And when he arose and he came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion. And he ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this is my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. This tells us of the father's disposition towards you and I. See, because every one of us have been the wasteful son. Every one of us. Because of compassion, we've received, and we can offer that to others. What God has done in us, we can share with those around us. In 1 John 4, 19, it says, we love because he first loved us. See, that's what the world needs around us. More than anything else, people with compassion. The compassion of Christ in our hearts living out compassion in our everyday lives, seeing the people that we can touch. Let me tell you something. You can touch somebody with compassion. Somebody in your circles. There are people who need a kind word. They need somebody to love them and care and to listen. We need to have compassion. You can change somebody's life if you do that. Let me pray for you today. Father, I thank you for the compassion that you had for us. And Lord, even as we experience that compassion, let us be able to share it with others. That what you've done in us can turn our life around, but yet it can turn others around us. Lord, let us be mindful to have compassion on those around us that we run into every day. Let us be willing to touch somebody with the joy that you've given us. Lord, I thank you for all you do for us. Lord, for how you touch our life every day. That you draw us to you and you draw us deeper in our walk with you. Lord, we thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm so glad you joined with us today. I believe God will do some great things in your life if you open up to him and walk with him more than you ever have before. If you'd like to be involved here, we'd love to have you be a part here. You can go to our website, and you can check out different ways to be involved, our service times, and we would love to have you come and share with us. May God bless you. May you find peace and strength every day.